That's fine. Good morning. <laughs> the song that you're here talking about, um, the new song that you have, is Spinny. Yes. And um, when I listened to it, I was like, this is kind of an old school voice with modern music. Was that the plan? Or? That is the plan. I'm. Uh, well, I kind of come from... Uh, my influences early on were traditional artists and I love traditional country music and when I first started singing that's what I was singing and uh, so it's hard for me to have anything but a slightly traditional sounding voice but we want our music to be modern and edgy and we want to fit in with current what's going on in country music right now and uh, we wanted to kind of make a song that talks about you know an early relationship and that excitement so that's how the direction we wanted to go with this whole EP, and, and uh, certainly this song, Spin Me. Yep. Uh, um, who's the producer? Daniel Agee's the producer, and he is a band leader and lead guitar player for Joe Nichols. And he went to school with me. We grew up in the same town in Oxford, Ohio. And uh, we've been friends. I moved to Nashville because of him back in 2000 for the first time. And uh, so we actually got the chance to write this song together. He did an outstanding job. On he is a very, very brilliant producer, and he's got some big things ahead of him as well in that arena. Very cool. And as I said, so creative courage is kind of the topic. When a song like that, so you write it, so it's extra personal. You write it, it's finished, artwork's done, it's ready to go on iTunes. What does that feel like? What's, what's going on? Well, anytime you can take music from writing and from recording on your phone to a full production is an incredible experience. Um, and you're putting yourself out there. You know, you're taking risks uh, because the, once you put something out, it's a body of your work for your entire career. So you want to make sure that you believe in it, you stand behind it, it comes from your heart. And it's not just something you did for a, a fad or for something that you thought, hey, people will like this. You do it because you like it and, and you want to share that. And that's what we uh, came up with that, with this song and, and wanted to do and uh, basically the whole project. But um, the feeling's incredible. And, and this song came to life and this album came to life because of our, our fans through Kickstarter. So they raised the money for this. So when they helped me make this album and bring it to life i wanted to give back to them with with some success and 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 they're part of everything that happens good from this album good and bad but you know they helped create some wonderful opportunities and so we're excited to see where it goes and the the idea that being creative means making yourself vulnerable which means doing it anyway is being courageous how, how do you handle that? well I'm an independent artist, so everything that I do is is my kind of a choice, and um, you know, so there's a responsibility to be true to myself and put out there what I want to put out there, um, and you know, you never know what what's going to work, but it's scary, uh, you know, in the background, even just creating the process of the Kickstarter is scary because if you don't get all of the money, you don't get any of the money, and. We didn't know. We knew it would take over twenty thousand dollars to make this come to life, and that's a lot of money for for fans. And I have great fans, but I just didn't know, and I was scared. And uh, but we kind of we started piecing it together, and we took the leap of faith, held our breath, put it out there, and they came through in a big way. So, and that's the way my career has gone so far, and it's it's been an awesome ride. And when things happen, they tend to happen quickly. Yeah. But to get to those moments, it's often a long wait. <laughs> So how do you how do you struggle and handle that need to stay patient? Well, the fans drive you on. Uh, you're constantly hearing them from social media, and and I run all of my social media accounts, and I stay in touch with my fans. And um, so you might be having kind of a, a, a dark day, or kind of like wondering why you do this. But when you hear a story about what a song means to them, or they want you to come to their town, or they share with you something that your music has done positive in their life you know you it's not any longer just me it i have a responsibility to to them as well do you ever feel that responsibility as a burden or as a person i'm blessed 
it's a blessing to be able to do this and it's a blessing to be able to to put your heart out for music god gave me a gift that i'm happy that i get to work with yeah and the i'm kind of looking for like a specific example of the time when maybe you didn't quite stay as patient as you should have done <laughs> or you made a decision and then uh, you know six months down the line you think oh yeah you know i, I had good intentions but really that didn't and wasn't quite the right thing for me what well, I th- I think that uh, you know really it's been you know it's a struggle when you combine the financial liabilities in, in, in your life and uh, with this business um, as a independent artist it's it's uh, it's it's difficult to overcome those obstacles so um, bo- most of the decisions I've made you know I. I took a complete year of working no day job, completely following my heart, playing music, and uh, I lost a whole lot of money. And I don't know that I regret that. Uh, uh, it would be cool to have it in the bank, but you only live once, and you got to give it a shot. Were learned, yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Um, so, and I'm still learning them. I'm still learning this business. No matter how long you're in it, I think you're always learning this business because it's always changing. Um, but I don't have any regrets. I, uh, you know money you can make more and you know you follow your heart and then when when you're all done and you're sitting in your rocking chair at the end of your life did you do everything you could to follow your dream and and take that talent god gave you and go use it and that's what i'm gonna do yeah i think that's a fantastic attitude um one of the things that's really tough and we started talking about that was that you release your stuff you know what's going to come back to you is not always going to be good um, so how do you filter feedback because you can't take all of it because you can go insane but you need to keep the constructive criticism that's going to help you get better so how do you decide what causes? well um constructive criticism has a uh, an emotional range that you go through you first you're you first get angry and then you're like then you look at yourself and like you you question yourself but then you then you get through all that and you go, okay, where's the nugget of wisdom here? What do I need to change? Do I need to change anything? Do they just not get me? Um, so I think that there's just that range of emotion you go through. But uh, I do have, uh, you know, a good support system that helps me to filter through that. This is, these, because as I was saying before, like I'm, using these answers to kind of put together this piece of research and that answer I'm hearing over and over and over from the people who are good at it is this this stuff is trust the team and the comments hurt because they're true <laughs> so, yeah. I don't agree yeah actually that's right um, what still feels because you're a, a little ways into this now and you obviously you know you've got chart success behind you you have fans behind you now what still feels the most vulnerable part of the whole thing? Sometimes it's vulnerable uh, performing live at this level um, due to w- when, you, when you are going to new crowds and you haven't performed for them yet. Uh, hiring musicians who put their heart and soul into it like you do. I'm not a band, so I'm an artist. And, uh, you know, with the level of shows that we have, we can't always keep our good players that we get. They get picked up by big acts who, who can afford to pay more than that. So just keeping keeping the presentation of the product live out, you know, the right way that you want it, it's a challenge. Um, and I do feel vulnerable sometimes, but, you know, I don't ever let it show. But, you know, it, 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 it is it is a tough part of, the, of, of being an early rising artist. Which is why I'm talking. And I always end with a much lighter question. Um, if you had to put together a soundtrack to your life, songs that you grew up with, songs that are important to you, songs that are like your friends that you go and hang out with, what makes that one? Well, uh, I'm No Stranger to the Rain by Keith Whitley. That song, uh, when, when you have a rough day, when you have a rough day, I play that one. Um, songs like uh, Travis Tritt's I'm Gonna Be Somebody. Um, songs that uh you know songs that kind of put in perspective what we do um and like just i love the autobiographical song of different artists like what challenges they've gone through uh jason aldean's uh uh what is the name of the song you uh 
one one day you get your uh, truck, they take away your truck, and the next you make a couple million bucks. Uh, Crazy Town, that songs like that, um, just you know, an artist that I know who have overcome adversity and and stuck around a long time. But uh, you know, I'm a fan of, of of the genre and the good and bad of it. So yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great day.